What's cracking, everybody? Welcome to Insane's House. Come on in. Come on in. DJ Insane! What's cracking, everybody? It's your man, DJ Insane. You know what it is. It's Spiritual Encouragement Sunday with my man, Kurt. What's cracking with you, Kurt? Oh, man. How you doing there, brother? DJ Insane. It's good to be back. One more again. One more again. Yeah, this would be number yeah, yeah. five, wouldn't it? Yes, number five. Number yes. five, man. And uh, and we just ask uh, that uh, for the Lord help and that we'll uh, continue to do more if it be God's will. Amen. So you know what you got for me today. What we doing today? Oh, what you got? Man. You asked the question, brother. <laughs> Here go the answer. <laughs> man, we're going to look at God's word, man, with new eyes. Nice. With a new appetite. And uh, and what I mean by that, we're going to know that the resurrection is coming. And so we're going to do our best uh, to paint a picture of what our Savior uh, went through, man. And uh, not only went through, but what he received from the triumphal entry all the way to the resurrection. And I guarantee this is going to fill your belly, going to fill your heart, and going to fill your mind with Ooh. the word of God, brother. Man. So that sounds like some good old Sunday, Sunday afternoon dinner, if you will, at Big Mama's house. Oh, man, let me tell you, brother. This is going to put you to sleep like a little old baby. <laughs> and you're going to be... <laughs> brother, this, this is going to knock your socks off <laughs> and turn your heart around all for the glory of God, brother. Amen. Well, you know how we do it. When it's time for the word, we get right into it, right? So here we go with my man, Kurt, and Spiritual Encouragement Sunday. All right, again, it's good to be back with you all. And uh, thank God for my man, DJ Insane. Again, he allowed uh, me to come and to share uh, in the word of God and to uh, have some inspirational uh, words. Uh, that will uh, capture and a heart, and not only capture a heart, will guide a heart uh, to the Savior. And that's what we're doing. That's the only thing we're doing. We're trying to lift up Jesus and trying to bring uh, the Word of God in a simple way that all can understand and in a fun way as well. We have a God who is uh, hilarious and a God that's full of joy and God is full of laughter. You know, the Christian life is not boring and uh, our God is not boring. And so we're not going to hold you long. We're going to dive into the word. And as I was saying a little bit in the introduction with DJ Insane, we're going to do our best to start at the triumphal entry uh, to the resurrection. Uh, I know it's not Palm Sunday, but it's so much material that I would like to cover. And uh, and the hope uh, by the spirit help, I would do it justice. But I believe you would get an understanding of what uh, Jesus is experiencing. And not only Jesus, but the Jews, not only the Jews, but you and I as well, as we travel again through the word of God. So again, like we always say, from DJ Insane House, from my house to your house, amen, let us get into the word of God. And so let us start off with prayer. Our Father, our God, again, we do come. Thank you, Lord, for yet another day. Thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity, Lord God, to read your word and to hear your word and to share your word. So, Lord God, we ask that you open up our, our hearts, our eyes and our ears, that we will receive what the spirit has for us to receive on today. And Lord God, and we pray that this word, Lord God, will be insightful, Lord God, and that um, it will open up our understanding and why it happened, Lord, as we uh, travel verse by verse. Lord God, and we will see that you were working this out years ago, even before our Lord and Savior came upon the scene. Lord, bless our time together. Lord God, again, we pray for those of us who are saved, who know you. But we pray also, Lord, for those who don't know you in the pardon of his or her sins, that today this message, Lord, will open up their eyes and they will see Christ in a new way. Not only them, but we as well, Lord, we will trust you more by the preaching of your word. In Jesus' name, we say thank you. And we praise you. Amen. So as we uh, begin our uh, study, our lesson, and or our inspiration uh, for today, uh, we're going to deal with the triumphal entry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as he is actually getting ready to leave uh, earth in the physical sense 
and to enter back, amen, into uh, heaven. Uh, we're going to do our best to try to look at all four Gospels because all four Gospels have uh, a snippet, if you will, of the triumphal entry. And we're going to do our best to bring all four Gospels together to get us a full picture of uh, what is actually going on. And so we will start off in Matthew's chapter 21. All right, Matthew's 21. Uh, then there's Luke 11, and uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mark 11, uh, Luke 19, and John 12 uh, all have the story of Jesus Christ's triumphal entry. And we're going to do our bad, uh, do our best, not our bad. <laughs> we're going to do our, our best uh, to bring in uh, some of the events uh, that happened, you know, before Jesus got to this position, uh, particular place and time. And so, uh, again, let's get into the word of God and let's have some fun. Matthew 21, verse 1 says, Now, when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone say un anything to you, you shall say the Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a coat, the fowl of a donkey. So his disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and they bought the donkey and the coat, and they laid their clothes on them and set them on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And then the multitude went before and those followed, crying out, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come unto Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth. Amen. And so here we do have a lot, uh, again, uh, to deal with, and we have a lot to say. But again, as we said, this is known as the triumphal entry. Usually uh, this sermon is preached the week uh, before uh, the resurrection. And uh, what I'm, like I said a little earlier, what I want to do is try to paint a picture for us to see that all that Christ has went through, uh, starting from uh, the triumphal entry or that Sunday before uh, the resurrection. And then as the weeks will uh, come, uh, draw near, we'll throw in or we'll add to uh, some of the events also that tied into what we call Passion Week. And then uh, that Friday uh, of uh, the crucifixion and, of course, uh, Sunday morning of the resurrection. And so we have three weeks, I believe, uh, this Sunday and two more after that to try to get all of this information in. And, uh, and we're going to do our best, too, but there's always next year as well. But nevertheless, let's get into it. It says, now when they drew near from Jerusalem and came to Pep Bethpage, at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two uh, disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied in a coat. Uh, with that, on uh, John's um, view of the triumphal entry. Uh, in chapter 11, most of us are familiar with Jesus uh, raising Lazarus from the dead. And so uh, Jesus and his disciples, as they were making their way to Jerusalem, remember Lazarus died and Jesus got word and Jesus delayed his coming because in the Jewish culture, they believed if a person uh, was not considered dead to after, I believe, three or four days. And so Jesus actually delayed uh, his coming to Lazarus uh, in order to resurrect them or show the people of uh, that day that at Lazarus actually died. And so that was one reason why he delayed. And then he had the conversation, remember, with his uh, Lazarus sisters, with Mary 
and Martha, and both of them said the same thing. If you would have been here, our brother would have, have not died. And so uh, remember, and Jesus mentioned to them that he is the resurrection. And so uh, they did not know, and we did not know, uh, that Jesus was going to raise Lazarus at that time. And so that's where Jesus was coming from as he again making his way to Jerusalem to be crucified. And so uh, again, as I read the, the, uh, the verse, Jesus again, in this verse, as we see, he told his disciples, he gave them specific directions what they will see and what would happen. And as we travel through Mark and Luke and their versions of the triumphal entry, we see again that uh, the disciples did have uh, some conversations with the owners of the coat and also of the donkey. But Jesus in his omniscience, and Jesus being God knows everything uh, what's going to happen before it happened, he explained to the disciples. But what got me is that the disciples did not hesitate to do what Jesus had commanded for them to do. For he said to them, loose them and bring them to me. Now on the offset, we will say, well, why Jesus didn't ask for permission? Why Jesus didn't uh, first go and uh, you know make um, reservations you know, with the, the owners of the colt and with the donkey? But the Bible said, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So God is the owner of everything and not only is he the owner of everything he already knew a man that he could go and do these things in order to fulfill the prophecy that was made back in the old testament and so when we look at the triumphal entry we basically see him the old testament being fulfilled in jesus christ amen even before he uh, is nailed to the cross and so it gives us a picture where he was, Bethage by the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to his disciples, uh, go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find the donkey and the coat. Loose them and bring them to me. And see, when we look at this picture, you know, when you look at a king, a king comes in on a horse. Uh, uh, and so a horse is a symbol of war. But Jesus is coming in meek and lowly, as the scriptures say, riding upon a donkey. So he come to bring peace this time, amen, uh, in his first coming uh, on earth. He came to bring peace to the hearts of man and the hearts uh, of the people of God or the chosen people Israel. Jesus uh, came on the scene as we talked about uh, in John chapter, what, 3, that he came on the scene what well, to not condemn but to save and so we see him in a humble position right in here on the colt amen the fowl of the donkey as some of your bibles may say it says if anyone say anything to you say that what the lord has need of them and immediately he will send them like i said in matthew i'm sorry mark and luke uh, as they went, the two disciples, we don't know who they are, and that's really not important, but we see their faith and action. And as they went, again, they were asked by the owners or the bystanders, as some of your Bibles would say, uh, uh, the Lord has need of them, and immediately the bystanders or the owners allowed the colt and the donkey to go with the disciples because the Lord had need of them. And it says, all this may be done that what? It may be fulfilled that was spoken by the prophet Zechariah. It says that, tell the daughters of Zion, behold, your king cometh to you lowly and sitting on the donkey, the coat, the fowl of the donkey. Again, verse six, his disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. So the question for us who are saved, do we do what Jesus commands us? Amen. If he says, fear not, do we fear? If he says, go, do we go? Or do we wrestle with the commandments or the things that the Holy Spirit put on our heart? And so in this example of the scriptures being fulfilled and also the disciples following the commands of Christ, it is an example to us today that we also ought to be obedient to God. It's imperative, my brothers and sisters, that we find ourselves doing what God say do. 
And when we do what God say do, we will get what God has for us. Blessings and favor, you know, and doors will be opened. Windows of heaven will be opened. Doors will be closed and no one can take anything from us, but we have to follow the commandments of God. And again, they said they bought the donkey and they laid their clothes upon them. And so what we see here as the king and we're just talking about an earthly king, not Christ. As the king uh, will come in before the people, he will actually come in on a donkey. And again, what to bring a symbol of peace or humility. And those uh, who are there attending the king or the people who adore the king will actually lay their clothing on the donkey, uh, whether to soften uh, the ride of the king, I don't know, but it was also to honor the king. And so we see that the disciples put their clothes upon the back of this coat. And as some of the scripture tells us that no one ever written this coat, it was brand new, if you will, that Jesus was the first, amen, to sit upon it. And so we see that the disciples put their clothes on them. And then it says here, others cut down branches. Again, palm branches. It said in that uh, place, the palm branches were, or the palm trees were plenty. And so some climbed up, and we know how tall palm trees are. They climbed up, they cut them down, and they laid them down. And so we see uh, the majesty, or we see the parade, or we see uh, uh, the ceremony uh, that the people of uh, uh, Jerusalem is putting before Jesus Christ to recognize him as the Messiah. And see, this is beautiful, and this is why we wanted to start it, because we see that people are recognized Jesus for who he is, the triumphal entry, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And so we see this beautiful picture as the people begin to what, praise him and to adore him and to acknowledge his rightful position as King of the nations. And so we see here is that they cut down the branch and they spread them all on the road. And then the multitude went before and they followed crying out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. And so when we say Hosanna, it means save now, save now, save now. And so that's what the people were, were shouting, save now, uh, King, save now, Jesus, uh, overthrow the Roman government, do those things now, save now. And so, but the people were confused. Jesus did not come to overcome or overthrow the Roman government, but he came that to establish a relationship with God. And so these same people that said Hosanna a week from now will be saying crucify him. And so, but yet it says that when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved. Amen. We see, because understand this, a lot of these people see the signs that he did, the turning the water to wine, the healing the sick and to raising you know, the dead and stopping funeral processions, uh, giving a widow her son back. They've seen a lot of these things that Jesus did in three short years of ministry. And now as he get ready to again to make uh, his descent or ascent to Jerusalem and to go to the cross, he come meek and lowly riding on a donkey. And so what this says to you and I, that you and I have to be a person of humility. It can't be about me, myself, and I. You know, Jesus could have easily said, you know what, I had enough of this. These people are not worthy. But Jesus said, I'll always do what the Father tell me to do. And so God, as we learned last week or the, four, the last four weeks, that God sent his son into the world to save the world and not to condemn it. And so we see here as Jesus again is coming in peace. So the crowd was moved. So the multitude said to him, is this uh, Jesus, the prophet uh, from Nazareth of Galilee? And so they were in awe. Why? Because they knew uh, uh, Joseph, I'm sorry, Jesus' story. They knew about Mary. They knew how about Jesus came about. And remember this, he was a prophet without honor in his own home. And so they're saying, who is this? And remember in, in some of the um, uh, the stories and some of the, uh, the verses, they're saying that, you know, isn't this not Joseph's son? You know, isn't this not the carpenter? You know, he's a nobody. 
but yet we see Jesus being exalted by the crowd. And as I turn my Bible, you can turn yours to Mark, uh, the 11th chapter as well. And we will again look at the triumphal entry from Mark's perspective. It says, again, now he drew near to Jerusalem and Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives. Again, he sent his two disciples and said to them, go opposite of you. And soon you will enter in. You will find a coat. And just like Matthew said, loose it and bring it. And if anyone say why you are doing this and say that the Lord has need of it and immediately he what will send it. And they went in their way and found a coat uh, by the door outside the street and they loosed it. Some of those who stood there said to them, why are you doing it? Uh, what are you doing? Loosen these coats. And so remember, Jesus has already prepared the disciples to give an answer. And so again, it's just confirming what Jesus has already said in Matthews. All right, there's people by. There's people saying, what are you doing? And the disciples said, the Lord has need of them. And they let them go. And again, uh, it says here, they spoke to them as Jesus had commanded. Jesus' words is true. Jesus' words have power to change situations and circumstance. Jesus uh, has power to change your life and my life. And again, as he is making his way to the cross, he's getting ready to do something special for all of humanity. And this is exciting you all because we already know the story, those of us who are saved, but there might be someone listening today who do not know the story. Jesus is making his way to the cross just for you. And that's personal, you all. Yes, for, for the world, as the Bible says, but personally for you, he is dying in your place. And so they said they let them go, talking about the, the donkey, uh, the mother donkey, and also uh, the male uh, coat or the young donkey, if you will. And then they bought the coat to Jesus. They threw their clothes on him. Again, we read that in uh, Matthews, and he sat on it. All right, and they began to spread their clothes on the road again. And so we see all of this, what began uh, to unfold from Matthew to Mark. Again, let's read this with verse nine. Hosanna, blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he, uh, blessed is the kingdom of our father David. Now remember, back uh, as, as God and David was conversating in 2 Samuel, he told David that he will always have uh, uh, heir sitting on the throne. And so we recognize the son of David is Jesus' messianic, messianic title. And so, and what does that mean? That he is the soon coming Messiah. And so it said, bless the son of David, in which is Christ himself. And so when we look in the lineage or the genealogy, I should say, of Jesus in Matthew uh, chapter one, we we'll see the son of David, the son of Abraham. And so what, again, it is talking about what the messianic title uh, through David, but also the royal uh, title through Abraham, the royal blood. And so again, the crowd, it says, blessed is the kingdom of our father, who? David. Now remember, David uh, had his challenges. And so I'm not going to go ahead and uh, uh, expose him. It's in the Bible and you can read it for yourself because, you know, just like David sinned, we sinned. But yet these people were excited for what God has done for them and for King David. He said, he come in the name of the Lord, Hosanna and the highest. He said, and Jesus went into Jerusalem and to the temple. And so when he had looked around at all these things, that the hour was already late and he went into Bethany with the 12. And so again, we see that Jesus had made his triumph through Mark uh, uh, picture or through Mark's version of uh, the triumphal entry. And again, it, exactly like Matthew said, but yet we see here that he dealt with the bystanders or the owners of the donkeys. Again, that the scriptures may be fulfilled and that the people will shout and praise God, amen, because the Messiah has come. All right, now let's travel again quickly through, not travel again, but travel to Luke chapter 19, uh, verses uh, 29. Luke 19, verses 29, and we'll find basically the similar words, but there's some more meat in here. 
and there's some more activity that's going on that I want us to see that we can try to unravel to see even in the triumphal entry that Jesus was dealing with the naysayers, amen, uh, and also the powers that be to try to quiet the crowd down. Why? Because they did not want Jesus what to advance his uh, gospel message. And remember, they've been trying to kill Jesus for a long time, but now uh, they're finally going to get to do it because of their lies and because of their deceit. All right, let's pick up our reading again at verse 28. Actually, let's go uh, down a little further because this is basically what I've been reading uh, from Matthew and Mark about uh, Jesus coming to uh, Bethany and sending the disciples here and there to grab uh, the donkeys and to loose them. So we're going to actually go up to verse uh, 37. It says, Then as he was now drawing near to the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that what they had seen saying, Bless the king who come in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him uh, from the crowds and teacher, rebuke your disciples. Now, here we go. Now, this is very interesting. This is very exciting because remember, they were saying in just the previous verse, save now, save now. See, the crowd was recognizing him as the Messiah and being what God in the flesh. And so understand this, and this is kind of hard for us because we have to go and learn the Hebrew. We have to go and learn the Greek. We have to learn the Aramaic so we can get a full understanding. But the Jewish people knew what this meant. And so it upset them. And so they were angry. And so they're going to go to the disciples and say, hey, hey, uh, uh, teacher, rebuke your disciples. Why? Because they're, they're giving you praise. They're giving you glory. They're, they're, they're putting you up there with God himself. All right, here we go. This is what Jesus said to them in verse 40. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. See, God deserved praise. Jesus deserved praise. And the disciples and, and the multitude was giving him all the praise and the glory and it was justified why because what he have already done and what he's getting ready to do jesus said the rocks will cry out and you all if we keep silent the rocks will cry out you understand that my brothers and sisters if we not give god the praise and the glory that's due his name the rocks will cry out. We have a responsibility to what? Give God praise. Yes, people will say, be quiet. Yes, people are not going to agree. But if God has done something for you, you ought to cry out and say, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for my soul salvation. Yeah, and they were doing it. And remember, this is what the Sahedrin, the religious leader, the high priest, that did not want to recognize who Christ was. You got to understand this, you all, that the Jewish men, they knew the Old Testament. They were familiar with the prophecies. They were familiar with the prophecies about Christ or concerning Christ. And now they see this unfold in their eyes and they're rejecting it. And see, understand this, and we, Amen. At times, uh, I should say, we, when we were not saved, we rejected this message. And those of you who might be listening right now that is not saved have rejected and still rejected the message. But Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Savior. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But we see here the Pharisees. Now, we remember when we talked about Nicodemus, the Pharisees, they believed in good and bad angels. They believe in the resurrection. They believe in all these things, but they did not heed that Jesus was and is the Messiah. And so we see that in verse 40. And Jesus had to say, hey, if they don't say anything, the rocks will. Now, as he drew near, he saw the city and said, and he wept over it, saying, if you had known, even you, especially in this day, 
the things that make for peace, but now they're hidden from your eyes. Even as he's getting ready to go to the cross, Jesus already knew that Jerusalem again will be besieged and then will be overtaken and then someone else will come and destroy it. But Jesus said, if you only listen, if you only heed the message that I was bringing to you, you will have peace. But because you reject my message and you reject the Father's message, you will endure some more pain. Listen, Christians, it's important, again, that you and I find ourselves in the Word of God, that we find ourselves reading day in and day out. If we find ourselves pondering and meditating and then grafting the word of God, listening to godly men and godly women who can explain the word that we can understand or that the spirit of God would make it clear to us that we can understand and that we can live it out. Jesus said, there's a greater purpose that I've come. Remember, he said he didn't come to be seen, but he came to serve. He came to uh, uh, introduce uh, to man the peace with God. And understand this, if we, we, we cannot have the peace of God until we have peace with God. Now look, he's riding in on the donkey. A sign of humility, a sign of, of peace. A, he, he is non-threatening. He's bringing salvation to mankind. And yet in the midst of what he's doing, the Pharisees have rejected. And there's a time that you and I who are saved have rejected. And there's a time now that you who are not saved are rejecting it. Why are you rejecting such a man who came, amen, to die in your place? And granted right now through this story, he has not yet uh, gone to the cross, but we already know the story. But why are you rejecting this gospel message? when God can turn your situation around, when he can turn your life around for, again, uh, his glory and your good. So he wept over the city because he knew uh, that something was gonna happen to Jerusalem and they were not ready because they have not embraced his father's message or even his own message. Amen, to come to him while there's time. Reading in verse 40, uh, two, I'm sorry, let's go to 43. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment ar uh, around you, surround you and close you in on every side and level you and your children within you to the ground and they will leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. Jesus was still explaining to him God's love and God's concern, God's compassion for his people, Israel. They still rejected that. And as he wrote in, and as he saw the crowd, his heart was still heavy because of their disbelief or their unbelief. What about you today? What about me today? Yes, there's, there's room for improvement. Yes, I can grow more, but I know without a shadow of a doubt that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. What about you? Have you received this Savior or have you rejected him? Now, quickly, as time is winding up, I'm going to move to uh, John uh, chapter 12, starting at verse 12 and 15. And it says here, the next day, a great multitude that came to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches and palm trees and went out uh, to meet him and to cry out again, Hosanna, blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. They recognized who he was. The question is, do you recognize who he is today? I'll tell you, he's the risen King. He's the savior of the world. Amen. And he can do what no other can do. Verse 14, then Jesus went, I'm sorry, then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it as it is written, fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's coat. 
He fulfilled the scripture. Everything concerning him in the Old Testament, he fulfilled. And he did it for you and I. He did it to make a way for you and I. As I said, I believe a couple of weeks ago, he came to interrupt our life that we may have a relationship with his father. He came that we may have the peace of God within us. And that we can, uh, that, I'm sorry, he came that we may have peace with God, that we can have the peace of God in us. You know what? Trouble don't last always. Even in the midst of your storm, Right now, you might even be confused. Let me tell you this. Jesus can make a way out of no way. He truly is a shelter in the time of your storm. He will be a rock in your weary land, meaning that you can lay your head upon him and you can trust him. You can take him at his word and you can cash his checks because they will never bounce. Has Jesus have a triumphal entry in your heart, in your life? Again, like I said, we just spread the table for the weeks to come. And we're going to see what our Savior have done, again, for humanity. Again, just referring back to the last four weeks as uh, the conversation he had with Nicodemus. In verse 17 said, uh, he did not come into the world to condemn the world. Amen. But that the world through him might be saved. And he came to his own and his own received him not. Now, remember, in those following verses, he said, men love darkness rather than light. Amen. But this triumphal entry, we see him in his majesty. We see him in his rightful position. And those who might heard uh, the previous uh, broadcast or the previous uh, sermons, as we talked about the Son of Man, his, his title that he has given himself, and we looked at Daniel chapter 7, and that he will be the king of all nations. But at this particular moment, he was recognized as the king of the nation of Israel. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, we, we thank you, Lord, uh, for this introduction. And we pray, Lord, that something was said, Lord, that even challenged the heart as we uh, read from Matthew, Mark, and uh, Luke and John's point of view of the triumphal entry. Lord God, and it was said that he fulfilled scripture. Not only that, as we uh, traveled in Mark's gospel, you know, he still had a heart and compassion for the children of Israel because he knew that the enemy would come in and destroy their land and him or men on every side, but they did not heed his warning. So I pray today, Lord, that we will heed the warning, Lord God, and that we will turn again from our wickedness and turn to his righteousness and turn to our salvation, which is Jesus Christ. Lord God, we ask that you prick the hearts of those who might not yet know him, but those, Lord God, that uh, will see him in a different way. Lord God, that they will fall down at the foot of the cross and say, Lord, save me even right now. Hosanna, Hosanna, save now. Let that be a cry of every man, woman, boy, or girl. Lord God, let that be a cry of the sinner, Lord, whose Lord is searching for uh, a way out. And his way out, and her way out, his name is Jesus. Thank you again, Lord, for allowing us to come together. Thank you again, Lord, for DJ Insane, uh, uh, allowing me to speak on this platform. We pray, Lord, that you bless him, his family, continue to give him strength, continue, Lord, to give him insight of what you'll have him to do. Not only him, Lord, but all of us, Lord, as we seek your face day in and day out. Your will be done, your kingdom come, we do ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Kurt. My man. Setting the table to remind yes. us about a big... I'm going to say uh, uh, a big abundance of peace reminder is coming. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, not just peace, but uh, we're about to see salvation be ushered in. Yeah. Amen. By the Savior. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, he came in, you know, on the donkey to right. show peace and humility. Uh, you know, his first coming, okay. or called the first event. 
But the second advent, he's coming for war. All right, but right now we're just dealing, you right. know, with his first coming. Amen. And so <laughs> we're just trying to paint that picture, set the table. You know, as we talked about a little earlier, uh, uh, the the salad part of it. Right. <laughs> hey, man, listen. You know, the, the appetizer part of it. Right. Yes. And I'm I'm uh, I'm sitting up here. I'm trying to take my notes and I'm looking. I'm like, wow, all I can get out of this is setting the table. I'm like, I'm yes. overwhelmed already with the salad. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, it's a lot of man. You, you put a lot in a little space today, man. Well, I mean, it's a lot. And that's why we wanted to start it all. So we didn't have to rush through it. Right. And I know to some it might be a little redundant because we read the same thing over and over. Right. But we want to see the point of view of the disciples, right. how each right. and every, well, I shouldn't say the disciples because Luke was not a disciple, uh, but the right. gospel writers, I should say, and I should clarify that, uh, uh, that how they saw it, mm -hmm. you know, or how it was uh, uh, told to Luke, you know, by the disciples that he uh, conversed with, you know, and so that's what we say. We just set the table, you know, and then the main course is coming in a few weeks. Oh, yes. Yeah. Excited about it. Hey, as usual, man, you know, I appreciate you sharing the word because I'm a student, you know. So this is not just helping you guys, it's helping me. So I appreciate you, Kurt, man. Everything you do. Man. Oh man, we all students, man. None of us have arrived. You right. know, we still be worked on working uh uh, uh we're under construction, I should say. Amen. You know, so keep your hard hat on. You know, keep your vest on, keep your boots on, you know, because we got to go to work. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you know when we upload a new episode. All right.